Let's chat here. One more time for Amanda Shires. Jason Isbell's going to join us here. Thank you, thank you for coming out. Of course, you live in town now, right? Yes, sir. You're in Nashville for a few years. Mm -hmm. About a long way from Texas. How does Texas stay in your, uh, in your soul, in your heart? How, how you know, loyal do you feel to that place that... I'm so loyal that I still, after living here a few years, I uh, refuse to learn any way around. I follow the GPS. <laughs> like, I'm going to continue to be a Texan because okay. I don't know my way around. <laughs> but Lubbock, you're, you're covered. You yeah. can find your way. It, it's really a little town, Lubbock. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, speaking of this journey, I mean, you really rooted in country music. You played fiddle with the, the uh, Texas Playboys and, you know, the, the new version of that great old swing band. Now you're doing a very ethereal, interesting, modern kind of music. Did you see that, uh, that distance back then? Did you want to sort of burst out, really try new things? Or in these last couple of albums, has it surprised you a little bit? the colors and textures you're messing with? I feel like as a, you know, a child or a teenager learning, um, you know, I was still 14, 15. I had no frontal lobe development. I didn't see what anything was going to do. I don't have any ESP or I would, you know, I would be awesome at predictions. But um, I don't know. I just, I just play music and it just happens how it happens. Well, that Carrying Lightning record seems like it must have a few things must have clicked up here. Like, you wanted a different texture. It got a lot of attention from a new, new realms of, of people. And uh, well, how, looking back on that record, was it pivotal for you stylistically? Maybe so. I just felt like uh, learning the language of how to describe what you're hearing in your brain, like, I want it to sound like this, is kind of a tough thing to learn. But if you get in a studio pretty regularly and around people that know a lot about um, gear and microphones and how to translate. I want it to sound, you know, fuller or dirtier or more like, you know. Peanut yeah, peanut butter sandwich, you know. Say, I want it to sound more like peanut butter and jelly. They, they kind of know what that means. <laughs> and, A new language of music. Yes. And I think that once you start learning that language, you're able to get what you hear in your brain out onto a recording. Awesome. So, of course, another great chapter here. Mr. Isbell, um, hey there. you and your life, and uh, it's just been awesome. Congratulations. This is still pretty, pretty new uh, marriage. And uh, what's it been like to work together? Y'all's music is pretty different when you play, you know, what you do on stage and on your records, but what's it been like, the collaborative part? It's a, it's a whole lot of fun, you know? I spent a lot of my life trying to uh, pair up with a civilian, as we say, <laughs> somebody who wasn't part of the music business at all. And it didn't work out very well because I really like to be able to just pick up an instrument around the house and play music with whoever happens to be there. And I don't really let too many people in the house. So it's <laughs> nice to have her there to pick up a fiddle and play. Um, professionally, you know, we get along real well. I think if we both played guitar or if we both played fiddle, we'd be in serious right, trouble. Right, right. But the fact that I play a rhythm instrument and she plays a lead instrument, as my granddad used to say, um, makes it all work out in the end. Mm -hmm. What about writing together? You bounce ideas off, start, co-write directly? We don't really co-write much. Um, we've done that a time or two, but for the most part, we just, we have to set a time to separate because if we don't do that, we'll just hang out together watching movies all day. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll... Uh, but sometimes I say, is this a good idea or not? Yeah, and we edit together yeah. too. We do a lot of that. That, that you know, there's not as much need for the uh, intelligent stranger anymore because we can bounce stuff off of each other and get honest feedback from that, um, which sometimes can be, you know, it can hurt your feelings pretty bad if, if your wife thinks that your song's stupid. But it's it's better for her to think it's stupid than everybody <laughs> else it gets in the world. <laughs> Very candid. <laughs> Well, y'all have had a cool year, too, in that you've found, I, every time I've heard turned on public radio in the last uh, year, it seems like I've heard one or both of you in a big and wonderful interviews, and uh, y'all have been able to tell your story, and you've had, you had a couple of hard years and broke your finger, and, and all this has been uh, just, a, just a cool tale. What's it been like to tell this story to so many people and to feel like you're helping shining light on, on this little uh, piece of Roots music and, some, and, just, and songwriting in Nashville. It's kind of cool. I like to tell stories, um, yeah. for one. 
But um, I, I couldn't be any more happy or proud to be doing the job that I have. Uh, I'm grateful every time I get to play any kind of music. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's really nice that the kind of music that we play is having a bit of a renaissance right now. Yeah. We'd be doing it even if nobody was listening to it. But it's, it's really nice that you can actually go out and there's big crowds for things like this. And when we go out on tour, we get good groups of people listening to us. And, uh, you know, I think it's a good time to be making Roots music. And um, as far as the public radio thing goes, yes, please donate to public radio <laughs> yeah, yeah. as much as possible because we like to eat. <laughs> and, uh, and, and your normal, you know, commercial radio stations aren't feeding the two of us very well, so please mm, yeah. donate to public radio as much as possible. And Amanda, did I, did I read that you're uh, studying f uh, writing, in, prose writing fiction? Did you? Yeah, uh, poetry at Sewanee. Poetry at yeah. Sewanee. Talk I switched. I was doing what you were saying. But yeah. I switched to poetry. Talk about what led you there and what kind of insights you're getting that you know maybe songwriting hadn't shown you before or how it's working for you. I think what I wanted to do when I was, my intention when I went to school is just to get better at writing, you know, studying the words, learn how to be more precise, have more tools for the toolbox, as they say, and I just, I just love language and I just want to be better at it, and I think education never hurt anybody, really, <laughs> and um, the interesting thing about how I decided on that school is... Um, a couple of years ago, we were driving back from a gig, and he was like, that school, Sewanee, is really good. By he, I mean he. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, cool. And he was like, they teach writing. You know, they have a school of letters. And so I went home, and I looked at it on, online, and I, you know, filled out the application. And Next thing you know. They accepted me for some reason. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. I, I'm there. Well, that's part of your journey, too. So good luck with that. Thank you. I'm yeah. almost done. Fantastic. Amanda Shires. And Jason Isbell, we appreciate you being Thanks, here. Thanks, y'all. All right. I'll take that. Thank you, thank you.